ready to eat some donuts? I'll wait. The answer to that <laughs> is you could like wake me up in the middle of the night and I'm like, Are yes, you ready for a yes, donut right now? Yes, ready to eat donuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Food 52 Video Studio. My name is Josh, I'm here with Erin. Erin, what are we doing today? We're gonna make donuts. One of my favorite things to make, and of course they're delicious to eat as well. Yeah. And uh, they're yeast donuts, which are my favorite, but how do you feel about donuts? Are you a cake donut person, yeast donut person? I prefer yeast donut, but I'm, I will eat any donut. My turn to say yes, <laughs> because these yeast donuts are so good. It's actually a recipe passed down from my great great grandma that I've just changed a little, but it's so good. It's withstood the test of time. That's great. We're gonna make this real easy for you today, and you're gonna walk away. And also, delicious. Yes, they're so good. That's yeah. the thing. At the end of the day, you really can't top making them and eating them warm from scratch. Mm -hmm. So it's worth that little bit of effort. And I promise, I'll pep talk everyone through it. Erin, I'm gonna leave the donut making to you here. All right, I got and it. And I'm just gonna kind of come back when they're warm and ready to I eat. I see how you work. Okay, it's fine. When they're ready to eat, I'll well, make you know, sure you're let here. The expert, <laughs> let the expert do what they do. So. I, I'll, I'll take it from here. I'll see you soon. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, so I'm so excited to make these donuts. Like I said, these are yeast donuts. So that can scare people for a lot of reasons, but I promise it's really simple and you actually probably have most of the ingredients already in your pantry. So I'm gonna start by adding my flour to my mixer bowl. And I'm gonna do a pinch of the nutmeg. You could do freshly grated nutmeg too. Or this is already ground nutmeg and a pinch of cinnamon. I also need my sugar. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mix those to combine for just a second because I don't want the yeast to get too direct of contact with the sugar. Sometimes that makes the yeast angry. Just a quick mix is all we need to do and then we can add our yeast. This is a tablespoon of instant yeast. Just gonna mix it for a second. And then I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients. We've got our warm milk and butter, which I'm gonna add over here. And our water. And then two eggs. And the eggs and the butter and the milk also keep this dough rich. It's an enriched dough and that gives it that kind of buttery, delicious, kind of richer flavor than something like a baguette that doesn't have anything in it except flour and water. So we've got, it's also gonna help them brown really beautifully. So we've got that kind of combination of a really rich taste and then we'll finish it off with a sweet icing and it'll be so delicious. So we're just gonna mix it on low speed for a few minutes until the dough starts to come together. At first it's gonna look pretty wet and then it will uh, start coming together and uh, especially when we kick up the speed a little bit. And basically we just wanna mix this until a uniform dough forms. It's about three to four minutes in total, but you can kind of keep an eye on it, eyeball it while you're working. You don't wanna over mix the dough like this cause that can start to make it tough. But like I said, it's pretty easy to tell when we get to the end here. This recipe is just a slight tweak of a recipe that I found in a family recipe box that was my great, great grandma's. And it said yeast donuts at the top in her handwriting. And I just switched a couple of things. I used butter instead of shortening. But for the most part, this recipe has been in my family and been passed down for years and years and years because it is just that good. Okay, so we're about there. And basically what we're looking for is just for the dough to be smooth and evenly combined. Like I said, it's gonna look pretty sticky right now, but don't let that make you think that this is gonna be a hard dough to work with. It is not. So the dough gains strength as it rises, which basically ensures that it's going to be easy for you when you go to roll it out. You're not gonna need to be battling this sticky dough. Just gonna give it a good scrape, make sure it's all combined. And then I'm just gonna dump it into this oiled bowl. I've just greased it with a little bit of a neutral oil. And you could use nonstick spray or vegetable oil or even butter here. And you scrape it, get all your dough out because we want to make as many donuts as we possibly can. And then we're going to let this rise. 
I went ahead and put this into a pretty large bowl because I want this dough to expand by almost two times before I go to do the next step. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to put it in a bowl that's about twice the size of the dough itself. So when this dough gets up close to the rim of this bowl, I'll know that it has risen enough. Enriched doughs like this can take a little bit longer to rise because of the butter, the eggs, the milk that sort of weigh them down. But about an hour should do the trick in a nice warm place. And then at that point, if you want your donuts tomorrow, you don't wanna wake up early and be making donut dough, you can put the dough that's risen for an hour into the fridge for up to 12 hours before proceeding. Or you can go ahead and use it right away after the end of one hour. It's up to you. So I'm gonna go put this in a warm place for one hour covered with plastic wrap. All right, so I'm gonna let that dough that I made rise. I already have one that I made yesterday and did sort of the overnight method. It rose up to the top rim of this bowl, but I punched it down. So you can see that now it's, it's back down, but that doesn't mean it hasn't risen. It's just a nice cold dough that I punched down. And it's ready to roll out into uh, donuts. And what, all we need is a rolling pin and a little bit of flour for rolling it out on. And then we need our donut cutter. You can use a lot of different things as a donut cutter. You can use different circle cookie cutters. Um, so you can use kind of a larger one and then use a small one to punch out the center. You can even just use a glass and then use, uh, make sure you flour the edge of the glass each time before you press it into the dough. And then you can use a shot glass to make the donut hole in the center. But of course, I have a fancy tool, which is this donut cutter, which evenly cuts both the outer round and the inner round and makes them just perfect. So that's what I'll be using today. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust my work surface with flour. And you can be pretty generous. You don't need to worry about being too light. We don't wanna to incorporate too much flour during the rolling because that can make the donut a little bit more tough but we're also not gonna have to roll this out that much. That's one of the things that is really unintimidating about donuts versus other things. You want a nice fluffy donut. So they can actually be pretty thick when you're done rolling them out. So the first thing I like to do is sort of shape the dough into a little bit of a square shape, just so it stays even while I roll it out. A little flour on top. And I'm just gonna roll it out to about an inch thick. So again, this isn't like pie dough or tart dough or anything where we're trying to roll cookie dough, where we're trying to roll it really thin. We want a pretty thick piece when we're all said and done. We just wanna focus on making it even, as even as possible. And you can sort of turn your dough around. I'm stretching it at the edges to keep it sort of squared off. That just helps me keep it even. And I'm just applying an even pressure as I roll out these donuts. They already smell really good. I can smell the cinnamon and the nutmeg. We're not even frying them yet. And they still smell good. All right, we're already almost there. I'm just gonna give it one more pass here. Okay, I think we're there. So I've got my nice, even dough and I'm just gonna punch out with my donut cutter. And I'm gonna go all the way to the edge because I wanna really maximize the amount I'm gonna get. I like to save the donut holes to test the oil to make sure it's at good frying temperature. And the donut holes are sticking a little bit, so I'm just gonna dip my cutter in flour and see if that helps. So I'm just gonna bundle up that extra dough and we can just separate all our donuts and donut holes. Oh, they're so cute. This is my other favorite part about making donuts is they're just adorable at every stage. And when we put icing on them and sprinkles, mm, I may not even invite Josh back. Just gonna eat donuts in here by myself. <laughs> just kidding, we'll make sure Josh comes back. Let's roll out our scraps at least one time. I'm just gonna knead it together gently only so we don't have a ton of lines that sort of you can tell that we pushed all the scraps together. And this time, I'm just gonna try to use some of the flour that's already on the surface so I don't use too, too much. But right after that first one we rolled, it'll be no problem to roll out again. This will make 
about a baker's dozen of donuts with when we roll out all the scraps, which is a really good amount, but this recipe also doubles easily. It'll still fit in the standard mixer if you double it. So if you wanted to make filled donuts stuffed with jelly or pudding or cream or something, you would just cut around. So you wouldn't need the inside donut hole. You would just cut around from your donuts and then after frying, you could fill them with anything from whipped cream to lemon curd to custard. I have some great filled donut recipes on Food 52. Uh, they're some of my favorites that you think you're eating a delicious donut and then there's even another surprise inside. So I think we're good. We can roll out this scrap one more time and get one or two more and then we're ready to fry. I know that frying is a pretty scary thing for a lot of people, but I'm here to put your mind at ease. For one thing, I don't even mess with a thermometer or anything when I'm frying. I just use the donut holes to help me determine if the temperature is just right. I like to fry all the donut holes first because then if you do have any problems with your oil, if it's running too hot or it's a little too cold, you get those all worked out before you put in the big full donuts so you don't mess anything important up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab one of my donut holes and I'm gonna add it. I think my oil is about right and I'm gonna add it in and see how my oil is looking. Now, if it's come to temperature, the donut hole should rise to the top, which it just did, and it should start to brown pretty quickly. So we're definitely probably in good shape here. One of the things to look for to know if your, your oil is too hot is if the dough starts browning really fast. So as you can see right now, it rose to the top, but it's only just starting to brown in this little spot here. So that's a good sign that we've got a good temperature of oil. If you do wanna take a temperature with a thermometer and just be sure, we're aiming for about 325 to 350, somewhere in that range, and it's okay for it to fluctuate a little bit while you're frying. There, I got my one donut hole. You can just kind of flip them around. The donut holes are harder to get evenly brown because they love to float up at the top. Sometimes it's hard to get the blonde side to go downward. Another thing to remember when you're adding dough into, or anything, into hot frying oil is that the temperature of the item you're adding is gonna bring the oil temperature down. So if you add too many donuts all at once and then all of a sudden you notice the donuts aren't browning, that's probably a sign that you just need to turn the heat back up. I'm using a nice neutral oil here. I like to use vegetable oil or canola oil. You could use safflower oil, peanut oil, just anything really neutral and that can heat evenly, even at a high temperature, like we're talking here, 325 to 350. And you really don't have to worry about adding too many at once in terms of crowding the pan with the little donut holes. When it comes time to adding donuts, you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't put too many in at one time, just for the sake of having room for all of them. You'll see, we can probably do two or three at a time. So some other concerns about frying oil just while these guys finish up. Uh, people worry a lot about kind of the mess of frying. So one of my best tips for that is to use a nice deep pot. So that way if you have any splatters or anything, they sometimes still sort of stay in the vicinity of the pot itself. You can see that I just have a couple inches of oil in this pot here, maybe three inches-ish of oil. And um, that is really all you need. You can always go deeper, but the more oil you use, the longer it's gonna take for it to heat up and the more you're gonna have to deal with later. So when I'm just doing a single recipe like this, I like to just use as much as I think I'll need. Three inches is about great for donuts. And then I'll only have to worry about discarding three inches worth of oil when all is said and done. So I'm gonna uncover a few of our donut babies here and drop them in to the fryer. One thing to be careful of when you drop a donut in is that the dough is pretty soft. So if you hold it for too long above the dough, you can see that it will elongate the hole here. And if you wanna keep them a little nicer and rounder, you just wanna try to keep them more together as you drop them in and drop them in pretty quickly so that you don't worry, risk losing that perfect round shape that we're working so hard to attain. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fry these. The donut holes take about a minute, minute and a half. These will take a little bit longer just to make sure that the dough is cooked all the way through to the center. When they brown on the one side, you can flip them over. It's really not a bad thing to keep flipping them repeatedly, um, but I tend to like to try to just flip them once. And in a size of pot about this big, 
we're gonna probably not wanna do any more than four at one time, just to make sure that there's enough room for the oil to sort of circulate around the donuts while we're working. And we're gonna do talk about a couple different finishes today, but one of the finishes is cinnamon sugar. And cinnamon sugar, you wanna make sure that you add that to the donuts while they're still pretty warm. So this first batch, I'm gonna go ahead and cinnamon sugar right when they come out of the fryer here. I'll let them cool for just a minute until they're cool enough to handle. I love this level of golden brown for a donut. That for me is perfect. I'm gonna take that guy out. I'm draining them over here on a rack that is over a couple layers of absorbent paper towels just to catch any drips and grease that we have going on. You're seeing I'm gonna have to adjust the temperature a couple of times while I work um, and that's totally normal. Okay, while those finish up, we can dip these guys into the cinnamon sugar. I'll go ahead and do all the donut holes. And you can see what I was talking about. Some of the donut holes have a little bit of a blonde side. That's okay. The cinnamon sugar will help even them out. This is cinnamon sugar. You can just make it to taste. I put a couple heaping teaspoons of uh, cinnamon in here. And you could add other things too. Vanilla sugar would be delicious, citrus sugar. All of those things would be really, really yummy. And then while the donuts are still warm, you wanna really coat them and make sure you put some in the center of the hole. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, I wanna eat this. Okay, I'll take these guys out. Let them cool for just a second on the rack because you don't wanna be touching them right after they come out of the hot fryer oil, but you don't wanna let them cool down too much or that cinnamon sugar isn't gonna stick to them. And then I think for the rest of these donuts, we'll go ahead and glaze them, which is so much fun. Cinnamon sugar is so delicious and so easy that it's a really nice, nice thing to do, but the glaze just gets really fancy and fun. All right, now we've fried all our donuts and we are coming towards my most favorite part, which is glazing or decorating the donuts. So there's different ways to make glazes and I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorites, starting with the simplest. All of these bowls just have powdered sugar in them. And to start off, I'm just gonna make a simple vanilla glaze that uh, just uses some milk and a little vanilla extract. So I just eyeball this, but you basically just wanna add it about a tablespoon or so at a time until you make a nice glaze that all comes together. Now there's two different kinds of glazes. There's sort of a thin all over glaze, like think about what you're probably gonna think of when you hear glazed donut, a thin all over coating or there's something more like an icing that goes on the top. They're actually both the same, just differing levels of moisture inside of them. So with this vanilla glaze, I'll make it a little bit thinner to show you what an all over glaze looks like. And then for the fruit glazes that we're gonna make, I'll make them a little bit thicker so they're more just for the top of the donut. And now that I'm almost done, I'm gonna add a little vanilla extract to this too, or a lot, whoops. Luckily, that's one of those things it's okay to add a lot of. So I'm just gonna whisk this until it's nice and smooth. And that's a nice all over glaze consistency. You don't want it too thin or it's all just gonna run right off the donut. So I'm gonna set that one aside for now and I'm gonna make a couple of fruit glazes which are super fun and end up beautiful colors totally naturally. So this is raspberry puree that I made myself. Uh, I just cooked a pint of raspberries with a little bit of sugar in it and cooked it until it got all nice and soft and then strained it to remove the seeds. You can do this with almost any kind of fruit. You could also just buy purees. Sometimes they're available in the freezer section of grocery stores. Whatever you wanna do, you can really do no wrong. You can also just use fruit juice. It just isn't gonna be as strong of a flavor. So I'm just gonna actually add the raspberry puree right in here. And uh, you could also use jam for this. You could kind of warm up a little bit of jam uh, on the stove and then let it cool a little bit before you add it to your powdered sugar. But these make just the most incredible, vibrant, beautiful colors, and they make incredible tasting glazes as well. So I'm just gonna mix this. Ooh, this is gonna be such a pretty color. So you can see the difference in texture of this glaze. I'm making it much thicker, so it's sort of just a top glaze for this. And you see it, can th it thickly is falling off my whisk. 
not in like a long continuous stream. So that's a nice thickness for that. I'm gonna just set him aside and then I'm gonna make my last glaze, which I'm using mango puree. This I just bought at a gourmet food store. I did not make this one myself, but again, you could. You could just use thawed frozen mango so you don't even have to mess with cutting them. And this is gonna make such a gorgeous color and an incredible tasting glaze to boot. I love mango. So you can really make any flavor of glaze you want. You could make uh, chocolate glaze by throwing cocoa powder into the uh, powdered sugar here. You could also just use a thin ganache. You could uh, chocolate with cream to make a uh, kind of ganache glaze on these. You could use coconut milk instead of regular milk to make a coconut glaze. Really the sky is the limit. And uh, that's one of my favorite parts about making donuts is there's so many opportunities to be creative with the finishes. So I'm just gonna whisk this. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. Beautiful. So we've got another nice thick glaze here. Very pretty. Okay, I think we're ready to start dipping them. And when you wanna glaze something over fully, you can pour the glaze over, or you can just dip them in and really submerge them in the glaze. Get, this is the part where you get your hands a little dirty, and that's okay. So then you're just gonna let some of the glaze run off, and you're gonna invert it back onto your rack, and you're gonna see the glaze will continue to kind of run down the sides here, like that. You want your donuts to cool a little bit before you glaze them, or the glaze will really run off. So if you're trying to make a really thin glaze, that's an okay thing, they can still be a little warm. But when you want these just kind of on the top glazes, you're definitely gonna want those donuts to cool a little bit or the glaze is just gonna run right off the sides. So this is a thicker glaze, so the way that we'll dip it will be a little bit different. So we're just gonna dip it and you really wanna make sure for this one, you wanna leave room for it to run down the sides. You're not gonna dip it as fully into the glaze. And you can see even when I pull it out that it comes off a little bit different. And then you're just gonna sort of shake it to even out that top so that you don't get any lines or anything. All right, mango. Ooh, that's so pretty. I love when something tastes as good as it looks and this mango definitely will. Oh my gosh. So using powdered sugar for your glazes also helps make them real shiny. And the powdered sugar will also set as the donuts set. So you'll end up with kind of an outer layer. So they're not gonna keep being drippy and goopy on you if you let them set for a little while first. So while the donut glaze is still sort of soft, we can add sprinkles or any other kind of adornments to them. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna add some sprinkles. I'm officially having too much fun. Let's add some fun sprinkles, rainbow. So when I moved into my current house, I thought it would be so fun to have an entire cabinet of sprinkles, but the cabinet already overfloweth. I have too many sprinkles. So I uh, now have multiple shelves and a true sprinkle addiction. So let me add some sprinkles to that one while it's still wet. So you can see kind of how quickly that glaze sets up. Just a couple of minutes and your sprinkles may not stick anymore. This is a great thing to do with your family too. You can do all the hard work of frying the donuts then bring them in for this part, the decorating part, the mess making part. But I wanted to have all this fun for myself. I'll just invite Josh back to help me eat them. Okay, so which one do you feel compelled to try first? I'm not gonna tell you what any of them are. Uh, I sort of wanna try a mini first. Let's do it, I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna do that with you because it's a perfect, they're just cinnamon sugar. Cheers, donut cheers, yeah. cheers. Poofy, mm -hmm. you know, nice poofy vibe. Really light and fluffy, right? Mm -hmm. This recipe also sort of has a little bit of a crunchy exterior. Like, mm -hmm. crunchy's maybe the wrong word, but crisp. So yeah. then it almost amplifies that fluffiness inside, right. like which I really love. Like you're eating something puffy, but also with a little, like it's substantial. Mm -hmm. It's not like a total cloud of air, you know? 
Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, pick another. <laughs> I'm gonna do a red one, if that helps you. All right, I'll, I'll join you on that. These look so good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Cheers again. Mm. <laughs> mm. Total silence. No offense to the little <laughs> one, but this is better. This is really good. Do you think you know what it is on top? I think I overheard you say what the flavors were earlier. <laughs> okay. Like this, this is raspberry and that's mango. Like mm -hmm. you don't forget when someone tells you. Especially when you know you're gonna eat them in like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so like I had overheard that earlier, I'm sorry. No, that's fair. The donut itself is such a perfect vehicle for whatever you want. Exactly, and then the donuts are not too sweet either. That's mm -hmm. one thing that I think is really important. People think of donuts as a really sweet thing, but the dough itself, all these donuts, it had a quarter cup of sugar in it. So we can really go nuts with those finishes and make them really sweet and like now, really delicious. I saw your mise en place at the beginning. You had like a little bit of cinnamon and a little mm -hmm. bit of nutmeg in the yeah. dough. In Would the you dough. be able to taste it or do you think it's pretty subtle? So you can taste it, but it I'm is just, just a little it, pinch. Please. Yes, please do, because it's just a little pinch. So knowing that it's in there, you might, but it's more like just that little bit of warmth that gives the dough. Mm -hmm. So especially once the glaze and stuff is added. <laughs> this is so good. This is like, I'm gonna like faint out of the... This is my goal in it's life. Like stu it's stupendously good. Yay! To make people this happy with baked goods, but yeah. particularly donuts. So I'm gonna have to watch this whole episode now and sort of figure out exactly what you did. This looks so beautiful. I can't wait Thank to try you. and reproduce it. Oh, and it's so much easier than you think it is. I'm certain. Thanks so much for coming on. Of Thanks course. for doing all the work. <laughs> I'm happy to, especially if it results in donuts. Yeah. And don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> for more of these wonderful videos.